but yeah, in, in terms of how this all started, it came from a very personal place. So like you mentioned, I'm, I'm, I've always been very, very into birds and nature. Um, I come from a family that's very into bird watching. I grew up in the countryside, all that sort of thing. Um, but I am also not white. I, I have Bangladeshi family and um, my mum and my sister are Bangladeshi. And I think as I grew up, as I got older and older, I began to be very, very aware that I never saw anyone really who wasn't white out in green spaces, environmental spaces, nature reserves, things like that. And I think um, on a very basic level, like as a child, that just made me really sad because that, that was something that I loved deeply and I really wanted to share with other people. Um, and so when I was 13, I organized a nature camp um, and that was mainly because I wanted to go on a nature camp and there weren't any in the UK so I thought I'd organise one, do all the activities that I wanted to do and then sort of open it up and get other people to come and loads of people did sign up but I think that that camp was the very last straw for me because the only people that signed up were very white, very middle class boys um, and that was the moment where it wasn't sort of a distant issue within sort of nature or the countryside, this was an event that I had tried to run um, and it had been, like I said, incredibly white. And that was the sort of moment where I was like, you know what, I'm going to go out and I'm going to find people and I'm going to bring them on this camp. Um, and by that point, I already had my blog, I already had my social media, so I was talking about this. And one of the responses I got um, quite a few times, actually, was just sort of, you know, there are certain communities that just can't be engaged with nature or environmental issues. There are certain people who just can't be connected with those things, which... I felt couldn't be right because I, like I said, I had people in my own family that did care deeply, but um, obviously I was quite young at the time, but I went out and I found these people, I brought them to camp. Um, again, very long story short, I thought it was all gonna go wrong, but it didn't. And the people that I brought in this camp had an amazing time. And I had this sort of epiphany moment where I was like, you know what, there's this massive issue. People aren't getting that opportunity to go out into nature and the outdoors. And it's nothing to do with them, because clearly, as these kids this weekend have shown, anyone, if given the opportunity, can enjoy being out in nature, out in the environment, things like that. And um, I think that was the moment that I decided to start my charity, Black to Nature. Um, and we've been running nature camps ever since, sort of on a larger and larger scale, and they've always been super, super successful. But also on the other side of things, we started running conferences and we started talking to organisations and NGOs within the sector, because I think one of the things that I really started to recognise was that this wasn't an issue that could be solved with just grassroots projects. There was something much more systemic and much more institutional going on. Um, and in these conferences that we were running, one of the big questions at the time that we were trying to figure out is just why is this an issue in the first place? Why is there such a lack of diversity and engagement within these spaces? Um, and we did something very radical because the, the sectors had been sort of pondering over this for decades at this point. And we went and just asked people in these communities, which was, was very radical. It never